About 250 kilometers northeast of Damascus in Syria sits what many consider to be one of the great cities of antiquity, Palmyra. Over the past 2,000 years, it has changed hands many times in waves of conflict and conquest. And when ISIS captured it in 2015, the world watched in horror as it targeted much of the city's ancient splendor. Mechthild Ressler has just returned from Palmyra, where she headed a mission for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization to assess the damage. And she is the director of UNESCO's World Heritage Center, and she joins us now via Skype from Paris, France. Dr. Ressler, it's good of you to join us on TVO tonight. Vigetis. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to join you. Let us just, uh, first let's establish off the top as we take a look and situate Palmyra or Palmyra on the map, I've heard it pronounced both ways, that it once served as a Silk Road caravan trader's paradise. It has been described as one of the most important cultural centers of the ancient world. And in 1980, the ruins of this city were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Why did UNESCO give it that designation? It is uh, one of the most important centers of the ancient world. It was at the crossroad of different cultures. It's an oasis city, which was a merchant place between the East and the West. It has influences of the Greco-Roman cultures, but also local influences and influences from the Persian culture. So it was very important to include this site on UNESCO's World Heritage List. And how big a tourist attraction was it before all the violence took place? It was uh, quite a tourist attraction. Many of my friends have visited the site uh, in these times. Um, there was a city, uh, the city of Palmyra, with 50,000 inhabitants, and mostly they lived on the economy of the World Heritage Site. Now, ISIS took control after it began its attack on Palmyra back in uh, 2015, May of 2015. Uh, I'm going to ask our director, Sheldon Osmond, to bring up a picture of some young boys they recruited performing a mass execution of 25 Syrian army soldiers in front of Palmyra's amphitheater. Um, there's that picture from last year. Let's first um, do a series of questions here. Who was Khalid al-Assad? That was our uh, former director at the uh, World Heritage Site of Palmyra, and he was um, he was killed by Daesh uh, at the site. Actually, when I went just recently, I met with his uh, son-in-law. How old was he? He was uh, above 80 years old, and it was for us a terrible situation, but it was also a terrible situation for all the people working in heritage conservation around the world. Dr. Ressler, why did they kill him? This escapes all of us. We cannot imagine how they can kill an old man who was passionate about heritage and passionate about protection and wanted to stay in Palmyra to save the site. Do we know how they killed him? Yes, but I spare you the details. Okay, thank you for that. Let us now uh, share uh, some pictures that you have seen before with our viewers here, because of course not only did they kill him, but they also destroyed some very ancient structures, and we're going to show some pictures. Here is the Temple of Baal Shaman, Palmyra's second most important religious shrine. It was built in 17 AD. Let's show another picture now that shows us the extent of the damage to the Temple of Bel, which had been described as the most significant building in Syria from the Roman period. That one also 2,000 years old. Now another one. Here's what remains of the Arch of Triumph. And a look at the state of the Palmyra Museum. That's one artifact there. And then if we go in and take a look inside the museum, yes, a complete mess. Uh, they really had their way with the place. Now, in March of this year, the Syrian army, with the help of the Russian Air Force, retook the area. And you were there on the ground a few weeks ago to assess the damage. How bad is it? The damage is quite serious in terms of the Palmyra Museum because uh, we didn't know uh, before we did the assessment on the ground how serious, it, uh, how serious it was. However, one has to say that the movable objects to a great extent were brought to safety just before actually, but two people um, of the DGM, which means the Department of Antiquities, um, 
were hurt during the removal of these objects, um, uh, but they were also very much in a hurry just before Daesh came. And um, the last room of the museum could not be fully evacuated. Also, the big statues could not be evacuated. They were just uh, too heavy. And maybe you remember at the entrance of the museum, there was the, the so-called lion statue, which was also damaged. Mostly Daesh um, cut off the heads of some of the objects uh, or the faces of some uh, of the objects. And um, this, the museum was severely damaged because a bomb fell through the roof and went into the basement, which means into the storage area of the museum. So this is full of rubbles. Um, the second area we evaluated was the situation on the World Heritage Site, which means in the archaeological site. And you sh just showed the pictures where we also evaluated the damages. Um, we have to go on a case by case um basis. Uh, you showed the picture of the triumphal arc. Um, what we can do there, the pieces are still there on the ground. Um, I discussed with Mamun Abdel Karim, who is the director of the DGIM, of the Department of Antiquities, that this can be put together because the pieces are there. It looks more serious for the Temple of Balshamin. Uh, you have also shown pictures because um, in one word, it's pulverized. So we cannot uh, guarantee uh, that um, a rebuilding can be envisaged there, but um, uh, we will discuss this further when we could access that area. I could see from directly in front of the tri triumphal arch, I could see and assess the damage, whereas for the temple of Balshamin, we could not access the area because contrary to what is said in the press, the demining is not completed. So um, Russian teams are still demining. They have demined about 3,000 mines already in the area, but there are still booby traps and um, other devices, uh, and it's quite complicated uh, to do that in the archaeological zone. Hmm. Understood. We, we should also just say parenthetically that people in Europe tend to call, I guess what we in North America call, call it Islamic State or ISIS or ISIL. You call it Daesh, just so everybody understands the references. Tell us, though, why does Daesh, IS, ISIL, ISIS, why do they feel a need to destroy all of these antiquities and in particular take the faces off some of them as well? Um, they don't uh, want to see other cultures. They don't accept other cultures, whether this is uh, people of the different uh, communities, Christians, Yezids, uh, any other of the communities, or um, uh, the remains of ancient cultures from different parts of the world. As I said, there were Persian influences, influences from the Greco-Roman uh, period, and they just think uh, it is not um, uh, their culture and this everything else should be eliminated and this is an attack against cultural diversity it's an attack against the heritage of all of us because world heritage sites are the heritage of humanity hmm. are they selling anything that they're not destroying um, we are watching this very closely because since resolution 2199 of the Security Council um, uh, and its paragraph 17, UNESCO is monitoring very closely uh, the selling of any objects from Syria and Iraq. And uh, we are also training um, experts and uh, the, uh, uh, the um, um, custom officers uh, to find objects. There have been a few objects um, from Syria, which have been found, um, uh, but uh, there is a whole black market out there. Uh, certainly Daesh or the so-called Islamic State is benefiting. Uh, there have been some figures around, but we are, UNESCO is not giving figures of, of how much this could be. But we are on the alert and we are now working very much with the art market um, to prevent any selling of objects uh, through this illegal looting and illegal trade. Uh, some of the um, archaeological sites, they look like a Swiss cheese, so not Palmyra, but some of the other archaeological sites, some of them are on the tentative list for future World Heritage listing, and this is certainly a serious issue. And help us understand this, because as we suggested, back in March, the Syrian army with Russia's assistance 
uh, took this area of Syria back from Daesh. Uh, but then we are also hearing very new reports that uh, Daesh is on the march again and has reinstigated the violence in hopes of taking the area back. Do you know where things are at right now on that? Yes, you know, when I went uh, just end of April, um, we knew that Daesh was uh, very close by. Um, we heard figures that they were about 30 kilometers. We heard explosions. And uh, we also, I spoke uh, to the military present at the site. Um, they, uh, the so-called Islamic State um, wanted to take back Palmyra practically every night. So it was totally unsafe to stay in Palmyra over overnight, so which we didn't do. We went back uh, via homes uh, to Damascus, um, uh, but uh, we were aware that they were close by and that they tried to take it back and that it was a very um, difficult mission because it was an area of security phase six, security level six, which is the highest in the UN system. So we were aware that um, they are not far away and that there's always a risk. Um, but uh, let's see. At the moment, moment um, I was in touch with the uh, um, DGRM, the Department of Antiquities. All we know is that the road between Homs and Palmyra is blocked. Okay, Dr. Ressler, can I ask you a bit of a strange question? Do you mind? I don't mind. Please okay. ask. Here, okay, here's my strange question. Um, half a million Syrians have been killed, just about half a million, in this five-year-long civil war. The Syrian refugee issue is still a long way from being resolved. Um, your job is to care about things, not people. And so th this is a bit of a strange question, but do you, find it, do you find it a bit odd that your mission is to focus on the things that have been damaged in this war as opposed to the people who are still in trouble? For me, there's no opposition between the two things at all. We work as a part of the UN system. I worked very nicely with all the UN, different UN offices, and we were protected by UN DSS uh, while we were on mission there. Uh, the people and the heritage, they go hand in hand. You cannot live in the city of Palmyra without recuperating the heritage of the World Heritage Site. It's the people which live with this heritage, and for them, it's uh, also for their own identity. It's very much important that this heritage uh, is protected and that this heritage is recuperated for also their social and um, uh, cultural needs, but also economic needs. Because as I said before, 50,000 people lived in Palmyra practically on the World Heritage, uh, on the basis of the World Heritage site and benefited economically. So have you heard any people say, what is UNESCO doing worrying about all these things? We need food, we need shelter, we need uh, safety. Have you heard that kind of criticism? Not to me and not during my mission and everybody there, um, with the local people and the uh, people coming from the antiquities department, for them it's very much um, a question of their identity to get their heritage back. And I can tell you one little story. Um, I was in the basement which was destroyed uh, partially. There are no windows anymore uh, in the museum. But I saw the director of the Museum of Homs working through the rubbles and rescuing the pieces which were there. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. I have heard the co-director of the Syrian Heritage Initiative, whose name is Michael Dante, say that ISIS has created, in his words, the worst cultural heritage crisis since World War II. Do you think we are witnessing a war on history of that kind of scale? I think we see an unprecedented uh, scale of threats to heritage. I mean, UNESCO has lived through this with the whole world uh, in previous cases. You have seen the destruction of the Bamiyan Buddhas. You have seen the destruction uh, live uh, on TV of the Mostar Bridge, which UNESCO, which UNESCO uh, restored. Um, and uh, I think we have seen other situations like in Cambodia and UNESCO in 20 years recuperated 
visited uh, Angkor, which was 200 kilometer, square kilometers of uh, temples. Um, and um, we have gone through all of that, but uh, we are seeing now an unprecedented scale of a combination of illicit trafficking uh, from some of the archaeological sites of intentional destruction at a scale we have never seen. And it's in all parts of the world. It's not in uh, only in the Middle East, uh, especially Syria, Iraq. We see it also now in Libya and we have seen it in Mali. And in Mali, that is the good news. Uh, UNESCO was able uh, to restore and recuperate uh, the 14 mausoleums with the local people. And that is a story to tell. Uh, this was a different type of heritage, not archaeological. This is earthen heritage, not stones. It's, uh, um, it's uh, um, rebuilt with traditional methods and by local communities. We would have not done it without the local communities. And we inaugurated the site again uh, in July uh, 2015 with our director general and the people were so happy to have their heritage back. So this is a story we want to tell. Let me get your view on this because uh, I gather some of Palmyra's Arch of Triumph has been recreated using 3D technology and photographs and I wonder whether in your view a rebuilt or reconfigured monument still has the value, the cultural value of the original. Now, this is at the moment a big debate among all the, the experts and the scientists because for World Heritage, a site needs to be authentic. So in principle, reconstruction is not allowed, but for the uh, Triumphal Arch, I think we will be able to recuperate the pieces. This may not be the case for the others. Now, uh, no, nobody is against new technology, and I think uh, with the 3D technology, we can um, help also um, tourists and other people, um, local people, uh, to explain how the site looked before. It helps us also in uh, restoration, conservation, rebuilding techniques, but um, I don't want to see a plastic um, copy next to the original site. Hmm. This would not be appropriate for World Heritage. Now, Dr. Ressler, we had a bit of a debate on this in Canada not too long ago because um, well, I guess about a year and a half ago, uh, a gunman stormed our parliament buildings and shot up a lot of the building, and there were bullet holes all over, and people debated whether or not to fix the bullet holes or leave them there as a reminder of the history that did take place there. And I wonder whether you're having similar discussions about whether or not to leave some damage the way it is as a way of remembering this awful part of history. I think we re need to remember this part of history, but with technology, um, we can also uh, include this in site interpretation. I know the same debate as you had in Canada took place after the Second World War in Germany. You have the Gedächtniskirche in Berlin, which is remained as a ruin, which remains as a ruin, and you had the rebuilding of the Frauenkirche with help from uh, many other countries, including uh, the UK, um, and that was completely reconstructed. Now, it is a big question, and I think it's a little bit too early for the case of Palmyra because actually we are still in a combat zone. Okay, let me share a clip with you and our viewers. This is, uh, well, this is quite an unusual sight. The Russians decided six weeks ago after pushing the terrorists out that they wanted to reclaim Palmyra's amphitheater, and as a result, they flew a symphony orchestra from St. Petersburg, Russia, to the same venue where the picture we showed earlier, where those people were executed. They played Bach, they played Prokofiev, cellist Sergei Roldugin was there, a friend of uh, Vladimir Putin's. Let's have a listen, and then I'll come back with a question. Roll it, please, Sheldon. Okay, the question is, on the one hand, you know, wonderful that this took place and, and a, no doubt a very uh, emotionally satisfying event to take place where so much ruin 
and a tragedy had taken place before that. However, uh, the Russians ended up getting a lot of glory uh, for doing something like this, and there are plenty of people in the world who think that the Russians are being very mischievous in helping prop up uh, the Assad government in Syria. So can you kind of make sense out of all of that for us, please? This is very difficult for me because I am concerned about the heritage of Palmyra and uh, we keep as UNESCO outside of any of these political debates because uh, we work with the experts on the rehabilitation uh, of the site. But I think uh, Russia made an effort to bring in uh, the uh, orchestra uh, because the Russian troops are working on the site. I actually met with some of them and uh, they are in the full demining operation under very very difficult circumstances. So we have to see that side as well. Understood. Okay, let me ask you one last question because I know you're off to Turkey in July to present a report on Palmyra. And I wonder what kind of recommendations you're going to make uh, for the kinds of sites that you would like to see protected from any future devastation. Um, we will cover a number of issues at the World Heritage Committee. Actually, we bring to the World Heritage Committee 150 reports on sites under threat from all parts of the world out of the 1,031 sites protected under the World Heritage uh, Convention. And we focus on the six sites in Syria, for example, which are all placed on the World Heritage and Danger list, and they have um, a different degree of uh, threats and damage for example, if you look at Damascus, which we also briefly evaluated, there's hardly any damage seen. But you have other cities in Syria, in particular Aleppo, which seems to be completely destroyed and which is again a combat zone where we cannot access at this stage. Um, we will, and we have done that many times, discuss with the World Heritage Committee what actions can be taken by the international community. And we would like to seek more support from the international community community to help uh, to protect this heritage, whether it is in Syria, in Iraq, in Libya, in Yemen, and that, whether it's intentional destruction or, or collateral damage. Understood. That's Dr. Mechthilde Ressler, Director of the World Heritage Center at UNESCO. Danke schön und Wiedersehen. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.